So in the last video, uh, I talked about why it's been difficult for some people to really cultivate a culture of growth mindset in their classroom or organization or school. And um, one of those reasons, I wanna, I wanna go into a more specific example of that in this video. So uh, one thing we've been hearing from people is that we need to celebrate mistakes and embrace failure. And what I'm seeing is that when we don't really understand what a mistake or failure is, it's hard for us to celebrate it. So we actually, in my opinion, we need to even move away from even using the word mistake and failure because it has such a, a weight to it and a value that we've made about it. Um, but when we see what, what a mistake actually is in the brain, uh, if we can help people understand that, then there, that will really help lower the fear of it. Um, because what we're seeing in the research, uh, if you go to ucubed.org, uh, it's a Stanford website, what we're seeing in the research is that literally there is more brain growth when you make a mistake than when you get an answer right. And it completely makes sense on a neuroscience level, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, so there's a certain kind of electrochemical process that activity that's happening when someone makes a mistake. They don't even need to be aware that they're making a mistake. They just need to make a mistake. And there will be more of this activity, more of this brain growth than when they're getting an answer right. So in order to understand this, we need to understand the idea of neural pathways. Um, and this idea of neuroplasticity, which is based on neural pathways. So this is a bit of a repeat from my last video. I'm using the same diagram. I'm gonna go into it really quick so I can jump into why mistakes are awesome. Um, so when we are learning anything, basically it means that we're, ha we're having a thought and that thought is getting triggered by our environment. Um, and when we have a thought, the, the cells in our brain called neurons are sending a pulse to each other. And the more we have a thought, the more we are learning something, the more we are doing something and, and those neur neural networks are getting activated, the more the brain basically sees this as a high priority because it means that the environment is triggering it a lot enough for the brain to want to actually send resources to it because it's expensive for the brain to, to send enzymes and all that stuff in order for us to change. So if it sees that something's happening enough, um, it means that it, it understands, okay, we're working at, this is what the environment is triggering, so it's gonna send resources and one of those things is gonna be white fat, which is called myelene, and it's gonna cover the connection between the neurons with this white fat so that the signal does not get interrupted anymore and becomes very high speed, autopilot, automatic, um, and that way we don't have to use so much mental energy in recalculating every single time. It just becomes, uh, you know, it's the principle of cells that fire together, wire together. It, Stanford uses the sentence, the brain is like a muscle that grows with you, so you gotta keep using it um, at certain levels in order for, for this to happen. Um, so that, that's the basic concept of a neural pathway, and this happens um, just based on our very unique combination of environments and what we've been exposed to and experienced. So Harvard Center for Developing Child uh, has the sentence, experience builds brain architecture. So these pathways are going to get formed based on what my experiences are. So they're going to get formed based on how the people around me and I have, generally speaking, each person is not surrounded by billions of perspectives of human behavior and talent potential. We're surrounded by a very limited set number of people from the day we're born. And so, for example, the way they react to failure, if they believe failure is, is terrible, um, through their biofeedback and my mirror neurons and, and this kind of process, I'm going to be having a lot of brain activity that is reacting and activating according to the fears, for example, of the people around me. So um, if they're not celebrating mistakes, there's a very small chance that I'm gonna be celebrating mistakes. And this also is gonna happen obviously in school. And I'm gonna get that into that in, in a couple of videos also. So that is really the, the concept of the neural pathways. And this is why it explains why a mistake um, grows our brain more because if, so if I've already developed a skill, if, I've already, if I'm already doing something automatic, automatically and doing it really well, it means literally that I have just built, uh, I have a network that is myelinated, which means there's been a lot of activity um, surrounding this network. It's been activated many, many, many times. So learning how to walk and talk, all of those things. Once I do them well, those are myelinated, well-developed pathways. So if I'm doing something new, it has to mean 
it has to mean that I am activating something outside of this well myelinated, well developed pathway. I am, it means if it's something new, I will not do it well right away. It will not be easy. It will not be effortless right away because I have, I'm activating totally new, sometimes far flung networks in order to um, do this new skill. And so until that becomes well developed and myelinated, meaning activated over and over and over again, um, until that happens, it's not going to feel easy. So it means also just that a mistake literally means, a mistake literally means new activation of a new network that hasn't been developed yet. So that's a great reason to get excited about it because it literally means new brain activity. And so one last thing, an uh, image I want to leave you with um, for this is from Seth Godin and he has a book called The Dip. So I'm just going to draw the dip and just explain from a neuroscience level why this makes sense. So the dip is this idea that when we start out, well, we have a vision of something we want to achieve. So over here is the vision. And um, the beautiful part about humans is that we can imagine something that does not yet exist. And so we can create a vision. So something has been sparked and we have sparked a little bit of activity in order to have this vision. But as we go towards it, what we see is that we don't know how to do it. We're not very good at it. And especially if we're innovating, there aren't gonna be that many guidelines or manuals or models about it. But either way, whatever we're doing that's new, um, we, are, we enter this journey where we need to spark new brain activity. And so um, we get into an area where we just don't know how to do it, it doesn't feel easy. And so we get into a place where um, Seth Godin calls it the dip, and unfortunately, this is where a lot of people give up because it feels really hard. And of course it does because we are, we are leaving our well myelinated pathways and we are trying to spark something new. And these are the ones that usually have the, the most access. So they're kind of default and we kind of keep coming back to our safety zones. But, we need, but what we need to do is we need to continuously push through because these are sparking up. And if they spark enough times, we will then, it, the myelination will start to happen and it will start to feel easier and easier and easier until we get to this new level of mastery. And then the other part is that this isn't where it ends. We are not creatures that just end. When, once we've mastered something, we are expansive by nature. That's just the, everything in the universe is expanding, so are we. We, as soon as we master one thing, as soon as you see, for example, a baby learning to crawl, next thing it wants to do is it learns to, wants to stand and then it wants to walk and then it wants to jump and climb so we always have a new vantage point that we want to experience the world from we always want to expand our frontiers so once you get to this level of mastery you have a certain level of sophistication and complexity but that means that now you have a new foundation and now you can add even more sophisticated sophistication and complexity so you're going to um, actually go into a new dip, and that's basically how life looks, and that's how learning happens. And there's always going to be these dips where we, we don't know what to do. It feels very uncomfortable. And, and learning how to kind of be okay with those dips, that's where pleasure comes from the process, and that's where we stop being paralyzed by not knowing something and not doing something well, and we can have that perseverance to push through. And so there's one other piece to why we will continue to persevere. Um, it has to do with our sense of purpose, and I want to talk about that in another video also. So this was just to talk about neural pathways and why celebrating mistakes, why it makes sense, because it literally is new brain activity. And so mistakes are awesome, and the more we can really see that for ourselves, the more we can honestly and authentically be excited about people's mistakes and failure. And when they feel that from us, when they feel that from our, our place of true walking the talk and feeling a sense of like sincerity about being excited that they're making a mistake because it means they're entering a new frontier, means they're exploring new territory. When they feel that from us, that's gonna help them um, dissolve some of their pathways that are, are linking mistake with fear, which is something they learned but we can be that person that models true excitement for this process and the struggle and the failure so that they can then um, light up those networks that say it actually is a fun thing. So they're going to make new meaning. It's about meaning making, making new meaning about mistakes and failure. So um, that's what I want to talk about in the next video. Um, I'm going to talk about why comparison kills creativity. So I hope you're finding this helpful. Thanks very much.